good afternoon everyone uh, i hope you are all doing safe and uh, yeah um today uh, i will share my screen first so okay yeah so welcome you all for the causal webinar session and um, uh, thank you for the for this opportunity to the organizers and also telarex uh, our distribution partner so uh, my name is uh, Sarak Kumar Macha and uh, I'm working as a European FAE manager and uh, I take this opportunity to introduce you um, a topic digital intelligence in uh, power supplies so um, uh, nowadays I mean uh, slowly digital trend is booming and uh, uh, we are using digital intelligence in power supplies to make them more smart so today uh, I will introduce you uh, some techniques we are using and also uh, at the end of the presentation I will let you know how it will be useful to uh, end applications. Um, so when you use such a smart power supplies what kind of benefits you get. So okay let's crack on. So that first of all I will let you know the agenda for today. So. Um, I'm, I'm not sure everybody uh, knows Kozal, so that's why I would like to introduce the company on one slide, just a brief introduction. And uh, I, I would like to let you know uh, the industries we are working on, and, uh, and then we jump into the main topic, power supply control technology. So I will introduce you the bas basics of power supply control technology, and then um, I will jump into the topic uh, digital assist control, which we are using inside COSA. And um, after that, I would like to introduce you digitally controlled power supplies, which will be realized through a digital assist control technology. And uh, here I will explain how uh, digitally controlled power supplies will be helpful to end applications. And later on, I will show you some potential applications. There are a wide variety of applications where digitally controlled power supplies can be used, but I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you a few of them and a final summary of this presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us on the chat window. Um, my colleague Anil is next to me and uh, we try to clarify your questions at the end of the presentation. So um, first, I would like to introduce you the company. Um, so if any of you don't know Kozal, so just a, here it is a snapshot. You see basic details. Um, uh, we are a Japanese company, uh, a power supply manufacturer. So original company name is Kozal Co Limited. And uh, we are located in Toyama, Japan. It's a west coast of uh, Japan. Um, it's one of the safest regions where less earthquakes, earthquakes and all. So this is one of the best regions. And uh, we, a company is established um, uh, in 1969. Uh, so we are really an old company with a well experience in uh, power supply manufacturing. So globally, we have 790 employees and um, our turnover is around $250 million. Um, our main business is uh, design and manufacture of uh, standard and custom power supplies. Uh, and also we offer value added solutions and EMI filters. So we do only power supplies. We don't offer any other components or uh, other things. So we just do power supplies. So we are really strong in uh, uh, manufacturing, design and manufacturing of power supplies. And the industries, we support different industries. We see more details in, uh, in the next slide. Uh, but the main industries, as you can see here, it's an industrial, medical, transportation, rail market, marine and defense. The next one, sales regions. Um, we have four main offices outside Japan, uh, um, one in Asia, uh, two in Asia, one in Europe and one in USA. And uh, product design. So we design, uh, I would say, most of our products, uh, almost 95% uh, of our product comes from Japan. And uh, we have, we want a factory in China as well. So two to three lines come from China. And recently we bought a company in uh, Sweden. Right now we are establishing a local design center as well because they already have the established design center and we are trying to coordinate with them. Uh, it's a company called Powerbox. Um, so we have design centers now uh, with this acquisition in Sweden. Germany and Netherlands as well. And manufacturing, our main manufacturing site is Japan. And uh, after that, it's China and uh, Sweden and Germany. 
So uh, this is a rough introduction of the company. I know you might have more questions on the distribution channel and other things, but if you want to know more about us, uh, please go through our website. You'll find most of the information there because we are one of the transparent manufacturers. But if you, if you need anything else, you can contact us, of course, at any time. Um, and uh, in the next slide, I would like to introduce you the industries we are working on. Uh, it's industrial and automation sector. Uh, our main market so we are supporting different applications here and next one medical so this is a um, second main market for us and we have a lot of medical uh, approved power supplies with a high isolation so this is a um, uh, this is second biggest market for us in terms of Tamawa and we also support transportation market and uh, defense and avionics, uh, defense and the avionics, uh, um, uh, from Kozal side, we don't have direct power supplies, but uh, our new acqu uh, acquired acquisition, so Powerbox, they support uh, defense and avionics market. So uh, these are the main markets. So this is a basic introduction of what we do. And uh, now I would like to introduce you uh, uh, power supply control technology. So uh, we get into the main topic. Um, so first I would like to um, explain what are, what kind of control technology used in power supplies. So you might know power supplies already. It, is not a, uh, it might not be new to you, but um, of course one of the main control technologies is uh, conventional uh, analog technology, analog control. So any switch mode power supply is built on based on uh, analog uh, control technology. And uh, recently, um, digital technology also introduced into the power supplies. Uh, in digital technology, there are different types. So first type is a full digital control, and second one is a digital assist control. So I will explain you the main difference uh, from next slide. But uh, first, we will see the main difference between analog and digital. So what is the main difference? So first thing is a control design. Of course, I mean, uh, we say unlock control and a digital control. Uh, in every power supply, there will be a controller. Um, so this controller design varies uh, between analog and a digital control. So um, basically in analog control, you use an analog, analog IC and you process all analog signals directly. And in digital control, uh, basically we use a digital signal processor uh, and we use uh, ADC converters. Uh, so all analog signals will be fed to the uh, control circuit directly and inside digital signal processor you can do multiple tasks. So um, it's uh, it's more advanced but it has uh, both advantages and disadvantages. So one of the main differences is a design. The next one is the quality and amount of information. So for example uh, in digital so it can take more signals and it can process a lot of information compared to analog. Um, for the similar amount um, uh, amount of information um, to process in analog circuit, you, you need more number of comp components. So it's not so easy. Um, so digital signal processing, it can process more information. And also a decision made by a DSP will be uh, accurate, more accurate compared to the analog. Um, so this is another main difference. And third one, complexity of the design. Um, so of course, I mean, nowadays, um, uh, uh, it depends, I mean, how, what kind of complexity we are talking about. So the first- People lost the sound, apparently. Uh, just, just a moment. Um, Mark says I can hear you. Everything fine, Mark? Yes, everything fine. Everything fine. Okay, good. Um, sorry. So, yes. Okay. So, um, sorry. Okay. So complexity of the design, of course, it varies uh, between analog and uh, digital control. Uh, basically, um, uh, in analog design, you need more number of components and more circuits to, if you want to have a higher functionality inside the power supply. 
but inside DSP, it can do multiple tasks, so you need less number of components. So complexity of design varies. But on the other side, uh, digital signal processing um, require uh, separate programming and other stuff. Uh, so the complexity of design is uh, different between analog and uh, digital. So these are the main difference between both of these technologies. Um, so now we will see what is the advantage of digital technology because in this presentation we are going to discuss more on digital. So uh, first of all, when I say digital here, it's a fully digital control power supplies, what, uh, what we are talking. So first one is the flexibility to implement various control programs. For example, in digital signal uh, as a digital control, uh, you can process more information. So and also it is more flexible because you can change the program and you can do multiple things. Uh, by using uh, uh, digital control and adjustability. For example, you can adjust the parameters so easily. For example, in analog circuit, basically the parameters are fixed and a circuit will be designed based on the, uh, based on the required parameters. But later on, if, you, if anybody would like to adjust those parameters, basically component change might require uh, and it's not so easy. But uh, uh, digital signal, uh, um, uh, using digital control, basically you can change multiple parameters. The next one, communication with external systems. For example, if you have an analog power supply, um, you can't communicate with uh, external uh, mic uh, external processors or microcontrollers. Um, as a customer, you might have your own control board, and uh, sometimes maybe you would like to monitor how power supply is doing, or you want to control the power supply. For example, such kind of communication is possible on uh, digital control power supplies. And next one, data logging. Uh, for example, you can log the data, uh, how power supply is operating. So in case of any failure or something, you can check uh, uh, using data logging functionality. And next one, faster time to market as it requires less number of components. Some, uh, sometimes you can realize more functionality uh, quickly by using digital signal processor. And um, it is so you can the design process of the power supply will be uh, faster compared to analog control. The next one, reduce the component count. We discussed this already. So uh, usually uh, a digital power supplies require less number of components to realize similar functionalities compared to analog. And next one, lo lower manufacturing costs. Of course, when you have less components, usually manufacturing costs will be low. However, I mean, uh, there are some disadvantages as well. Uh, and one of the main point is the robustness. Uh, usually we all know analog power supplies are more robust compared to digital. And digital is a, a, a bit new. Um, so it is used in uh, power supplies uh, nowadays. Recently, you can find more number of uh, power supplies uh, with a uh, digital technology. Um, so some of the main disadvantages are first thing, uh, power consumption. So for example, if you, uh, if you use digital signal processors, they consume more power. So um, uh, we should tackle this uh, in the design stage. And next one, cost of the processors. They're not so cheap. Usually the DSPs are uh, uh, really pricey. So it affects the whole uh, cost of the uh, design. So here you see some of the main differences between analog and digital. I bet, I mean, it's not a complete overview, but at least uh, uh, you see some of the main differences between both of these technologies. Um, from Kozel's side, basically, uh, we have so many conventional analog power supplies. Um, but recently, we introduced a digital technology into the power supplies, but we are not using fully digital control inside our power supplies. So we use something called digital assist control. So um, uh, now uh, from this slide, I would like to introduce you more what, what, it, what is digital assist control and what is the main difference compared to um, full digital power supplies. So usually uh, um, uh, the customer demands for the power supply are, so first thing, everybody would like to have high efficiency power supply and they would like to have more uh, functionalities and features. So, um, so for example, uh, some customers, they would like to have CVCC functionality. Uh, some customers would like to monitor uh, temperature inside the power, su uh, power supplies or uh, changing the fan rotations. There are so many demands. So they would like to have more uh, possibilities uh, when they use the power supply and reduce the dimensions because, um, you know, once power supplies are so huge, but nowadays uh, they are shrinking. Um, so much. So the power densities of the power supplies are uh, going high. Um, so nowadays everybody is asking for small 
devices because even uh, customers' equipment are also getting smaller. And a most important thing, value for money. So everybody would like to have, you know, a power supply in a reasonable price. They don't want to spend a fortune for a power supply. Uh, so uh, this is one of the key demands from the market. So to re realize all of these, uh, we have introduced a digital assist control uh, in our power supplies. So what, what is the main difference between digital assist and digital control? So the main difference is, instead of digital signal processors, we use a general purpose microcontroller and combine it with the analog circuit. So um, it, is a, um, uh, it is a technology between analog and digital. We both analog circuit for robustness and also we take microcontroller uh, to assist uh, analog signals and uh, take the decisions. So in this way, we can uh, achieve so many factors. So uh, I will explain to you later what are those. So we, as I said, I mean, the analog circuit, it mainly uh, offers high speed response and it's more robust. So for some of the functionalities, we still use analog ICs and analog circuit. So for example, if you take the response time of analog circuit, it's much quicker because uh, always this uh, digital side, there will be processing time added. But on our analog side, uh, if something happens, the reaction will be really quick. So it's a tens of nanoseconds. And uh, microcontrollers, we use microcontrollers for uh, advanced control or uh, any parameter adjustments. For example, if there is a over current production point, if anybody would like to adjust it uh, using the microcontroller program, it's, uh, it's very easy to realize. And also uh, communication, for example, if it is a pure analog circuit, it is difficult to provide a communication channel to the external control boards uh, on the customer side. Um, so we use microcontroller to uh, realize this uh, this functionality as well. So at the end, I mean, we are combining both analog technology and microcontroller to achieve um, following things. So first thing, size reduction. So uh, recently we have released a power supply, uh, which is called PCA series. I will introduce you later. This is one of the smallest power supplies in the market. So we could shrink the uh, size of the power supply further by using microcontrollers inside uh, our units. And next one, high efficiency. So once, I mean, we had, uh, there were units with efficiency about 80%. Now we could realize up to 94% of the efficiency. Um, we uh, at one side, we are shifting the size. On the other side, we, uh, we also uh, achieve high efficiency by using this technology. And more built-in features. For example, once a uh, customer would like to have any uh, current control or voltage control, we always ask them to use an external circuit to do that. But now, uh, with this technology, we can, uh, 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 we can achieve everything from the power supply alone. So no external circuit is required. So uh, this is another benefit. And next one, good balance of price and features. This is also another important factor. So uh, if, we, if we take fully digital control power supplies, basically they are very expensive. And we, uh, we should find a trade-off between uh, price and uh, features, functionalities we offer. So um, by using this technology, uh, we can offer uh, a good balance between price and features. So, uh, to achieve a digital assist control design, there are three main steps are required. So, first one, we should develop a circuit technology. So, we started um, uh, using microcontrollers in our power supply since 2007. Uh, so, we already developed our own circuit technology. Uh, so we use microcontrollers to assist the analog circuit. So we, uh, we see more details in the next slide. And next one, production technology. For example, if you are using microcontrollers, uh, we should have uh, a production equipment to calibrate them, to, uh, to check them uh, during the production. So the whole process, production process should be improved. So we need a new technology. So we have developed our own production technology for that. And next one, internal software. Um, for example, microcontrollers will have their own programs inside and uh, we develop our own um, uh, operating system inside the power supply, which is called PROS, Power Supply Real-Time Operating System. Uh, by using this OS uh, software, 
uh, we can realize uh, many functionalities of the power supply in less time. So um, uh, in recent days, we have released some models with, uh, uh, with an internal software, uh, PROS. So I will show you one example in the coming slides. So this is a, a basic overview of a digital assist control. As I said, I mean, it's a, it's a simple, it's a, uh, it's a combination of analog and a digital control inside one power supply. So first of all, uh, microcontrollers, I mean, what, uh, how microcontrollers um, uh, can function inside switching power supply, we will see in this picture. So as you see, uh, inside, inside the microcontroller, there will be uh, several parts. For example, uh, there is a RAM, ROM. Uh, ROM is a, a memory uh, where control program is stored. And RAM is uh, uh, used for variable uh, operation. Uh, it shows variables under the uh, variables under operation. And uh, it has a data flash. And uh, on the right-hand side, you see the main parts. For example, there is a communication module um uh, offered by the microcontroller so you can communicate with the microcontroller and do several things for example uh, there is a uart and the i squared c these are the common protocols used in microcontroller so here in this picture uh, this is a, a renesas microcontroller general purpose microcontroller and uh, you see um, it can do multiple things uh, and it can assist the power supply design very uh, very good and it's so functional as well um, so this is just an overview and uh, now I would like to show you the real example um, where we have used a microcontroller inside our power supply so we have a unit called a uh, module called CQHS 300 so just for the example uh, purpose I mean we took this module uh, this is a DC DC module quarter brick size um, uh, so on the uh, small box, you can see uh, blue color box, you can see the spec. So it can offer multiple functionalities like remote on off, uh, many production circuits, and also you can adjust the output voltage and it can offer remote sensing as well. So uh, here in the picture, you can see the basic circuitry. Uh, on the analog parts, there are four main circuits. Uh, so first one is an analog clamp. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, active clamp, and uh, there is a switching FAT, synchronous rectification, and surge suppression circuit. These are the four main parts of the circuit, and these are well controlled by the uh, well assisted by the microcontroller. So you can see the microcontroller; uh, it monitors different parts and uh, it controls different parameters. For example, um, a high efficiency in this model is achieved by the uh, drive timing controller drive timing. Uh, of the power semiconductor uh, so that um, the accuracy of its operation will be increased and uh, it can offer higher efficiency because uh, the losses will be low uh, with microcontroller assistance. Uh, and also the dimensions using microcontroller, the dimensions of this product uh, is shrinked. Um, so it is a 300 watt module in quarter brick size. So um, uh, it has a, one of the highest power densities. So. And also it offers communication. For example, um, uh, in the microcontroller part, you can see uh, this section, this is a UART. So here we use this communication for uh, internal uh, internal purpose. We don't offer a communication port to the customers, but uh, we, all, uh, we use this UART channel uh, to communicate with uh, other circuits internally. Um, so this is, this is an example how digital assist control is used inside uh, power supply, uh, power module. Okay, um, and then I would like to show you an overview of a digital assist control. So for example, here in this picture, you can see our lineup with the digital assist control. Um, we have started implementing this uh, in 2007 uh, in uh, one of the models called DBS. It's uh, still in, uh, in uh, production, DBS 700. And uh, we used our Renaissance microcontroller. Uh, at the time, we didn't have any operating system, so we just used a control program of the uh, Renaissance microcontroller. And later on, we uh, we implemented this digital technology in uh, to many other units, um, and then we also developed our own operating systems. For example, the red color highlighted uh, boxes, uh, you can see several models there. So all of those models offer uh, highest functionality. For example, uh, recently we have released a new series called PCA. Um, so it offers multiple features like uh, uh, just with a control signal, you can change the current 
and old age. And also uh, there is a communication port available. So we see more details uh, in uh, later on, um, but uh, it can offer so, uh, so many features. And uh, uh, we have DC-DC modules, which, uh, which are blue color highlighted. So CHS series where we are using PIC microcontroller. So we are implementing this technology in all of our new products so that uh, we can realize uh, smallest size in the market and also we can improve the efficiency and uh, we can offer highest uh, more number of features to the customers. Um, and also uh, price balance, uh, we can achieve price balance in, uh, with other competitors. So uh, this is the product line and uh, this, I mean, this is a brief introduction of uh, digital assist control. So I don't show uh, uh, how the circuits operate and all because uh, I believe this is not the right opportunity to do that because it consumes more time. So, but uh, however, if any of you would like to know more details about our digital assist control, um, pl uh, please contact us. We are happy to help you further. Um, now I would like to introduce you more on uh, um, digital part, so which are called the digital controlled power supplies. So by using digital assist control, we are offering a communication feature um, uh, on the power supplies. So which means customer can communicate directly with the power supply and realize multiple things. So first of all, we will see what is a digital communication function. So um, uh, for example, uh, uh, any customer who has a control board can communicate with the power supply and they can do uh, multiple things. For example, they can monitor the power supply, they can set several parameters, or they can control the power supply, switch on, switch off, and uh, they can do multiple things by using digital commands. Um, so this is a main idea of the digital communication feature. And uh, most common protocols used in market are extended UART and PMBUS. PMS is the most common. Uh, if you if you look at our competitors, I mean, even uh, I, I would say almost ninety percent of the units are uh, using PMBus and uh, Modbus. Uh, so some of our competitors are using Modbus and Canbus, for example. Uh, for example, we offer some custom power supplies uh, based on Canbus and Profinet. So if you take um, some Dindel type power supplies, usually in the factory automation, uh, they offer Profinet uh, communication bus. So these are the common protocols, uh, most common protocols used inside the power supplies. Um, among these, we offer UART and PM bus on, uh, on our units. So here in this table, I would like to show you what is the main difference between UART and PMS. For example, for this uh, table, I took um, uh, I took an example of uh, PCA series. So um, uh, we have a particular series called PCA, which comes with both UART and PMS. So I have compared the parameters uh, based on PCA models here in this table. So first of all, uh, the type of communication is different between UART and PMBus. UART is asynchronous communication and PMBus is asynchronous communication. So because on PMBus you will have a clock signal and uh, it, it synchronizes uh, with the data. And uh, protocol, you see basic protocol is RS232C and uh, PMBus is I2C. Um, so the most highlight, uh, highlights of this comparison is a distance. Uh, PMBus is most popular for uh, onboard communication. So usually it supports communication up to one to three meters. So uh, I'm not saying it won't support higher than that, but uh, I'm saying the reliable communication. I mean, uh, it's more popular for short distance communication. Um, but if you take UART, uh, it can support up to 20 meters, for example, on our units. Um, this is important to some applications because uh, uh, power supply will be located somewhere in the application and uh, the main PC could be somewhere else. In between, there could be so many other electronics. Uh, so they inject noise into the data line. So that's why a reliable communication work along. Hello, we have a small technical issue. Um, there was a problem with the connection. I hope that, that we can work out. Sarat is trying to get back in the, in the webinar. So if you have one, two minutes, um, he will reconnect to the, to the webinar geek software and we can restart the, uh, the webinar. So, and he's already coming. So we now share the presentation. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's start. So um, sorry for the interruption. Um, yeah, seems like a connection problem. Um, 
Okay, so um, I hope you can see the slide. Um, so basically, I have explained uh, different communication protocols, and now uh, we are discussing the difference between UART and PMBUS. Um, so, and another main difference is a uh, downside of the UART is the reaction time. So it's a slightly higher, 100 milliseconds. For example, PMBOS is much quicker, 65 milliseconds. Um, and also hardware complexity of UART is a simple compared to PMBOS. So, however, PMBOS is most common in the market. That's why we are offering PMBOS on our units. Um, so this is a, just a, a, an idea. I mean, what kind of communication ports are available? And, uh, First of all, uh, and we should discuss what are the advantages of digital communication uh, feature. For example, you can access power supply from remote locations and you can monitor the power supply, you can control the power supply. And next one, quick parameter setting. For example, some of you would like to test the power supply uh, quickly. Uh, and uh, you don't, sometimes if we ask you to um, design something externally to control the current or voltage, uh, it will be a tedious process. So um, uh, in that case, you can use a digital communication feature and simply change the parameters and then play with it. So um, uh, it's easy to set the parameters. And the CVCC operation, as I told you, uh, you can use our power supplies in CVCC mode by using analog control or digital control. So um, for example, we offer uh, a, a GUI on which you can simply uh, enter the parameters and then change as per your needs. And next one, storing preferred parameter settings. For example, you play with the power supply and then uh, you can save all of your settings inside uh, uh, inside the memory. So um, in that case, next time when you start the power supply, uh, it will take the settings from the memory. So you don't have to re-enter again. So this is another advantage. And preventative maintenance. Because uh, when you use the digital communication, you know how many hours power supply is operated. Uh, you, you know what is the input time, how much how much time input was given, and how much how much time power supply uh, delivered the output. So in that way, you can realize uh, how old is the power supply, and when it is the right time, you can change the uh, power supply. So this is another advantage. And easy evaluation during development stage. For example, if you want to evaluate any power supply, you don't have to design anything on your own. Simply, you can use the GUI, change the parameters according to your requirements, and then play with the power supply. So evaluation will become really easy. So, uh, and last one, so IoT platform. So nowadays, we are all talking about Industry 4.0 or uh, IoT Internet of Things, where uh, everybody would like to monitor every component. So power supply is one of the main components. Uh, by using digital technology, digital communication feature, you can monitor the power supply as well. So um, th these are the advantages of digital control power supplies. And uh, now I would like to show you overview of design topology. And uh, here I would like to show you an example how uh, uh, digital assist control is implemented inside this power supply and also how we are delivering a uh, digital communication feature. For example, this is one of our new models, PCA. And uh, in this one, we are using a three-stage conversion. So um, uh, we are using three-stage con conversion because of multiple reasons. So first thing, uh, to reduce the size. And second thing, this power supply uh, uh, delivers, uh, sorry, uh, this power supply offers CVCC operation. And uh, on this one, voltage can be adjusted all the way down to zero. For this region, a three-stage conversion is more ideal. Uh, so this is one of the highest power densities in the market right now. And in this one, we are using two microcontrollers. As you see, these are general microcontrollers. So one from, uh, so both are from Renaissance. Um, so a primary microcontroller, it's monitoring uh, PFC part and regulator part, uh, the second stage. And the secondary microcontroller is connected to the DC-DC side on the, uh, where, where isolation is there. Um, so. In the bottom side, you can see different pin layouts, and there is a pin called info, and that is a pin for digital control. Um, and uh, basically, both of these uh, uh, microcontrollers, they are communicating with each other. And also, at the same time, they are monitoring or controlling uh, different areas of the power supply. So you can see uh, several red and blue color, uh, blue color arrows with the different functionalities. Um, so. I mean, the first thing, uh, due to the microcontroller um, uh, usage, uh, we could uh, uh, minimize the size. 
because um, the main design uh, concept of this power supply is uh, reduction of the size and it offers size power density. So we use microcontrollers to do multiple uh, multiple things. So you can see um, inside those boxes, what are the things it, it, it does. So basically there are so many tasks done by these microcontrollers. And um, on the uh, on the right hand side, you can see the pin uh, info pin where it is connected to the primary side. And um, you can, with the info pin, you can do multiple things. We will discuss uh, what kind of things you can do using digital commands in the next slide. But uh, just I would like to show you an overview how a power supply with the digital control looks like. Okay. Um, Next one, to play with uh, any digital control, digitally controlled power supply, you, you need some tools. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, some of you might have interest on in, uh, such power supplies. So next time when you uh, buy a power supply, basically you need these tools to play with it. Uh, so first thing, you need a communication hardware. So for example, in our case, uh, we offer a power supply with UART or PMOS. And if you want to play with the power supply, you need uh, a conversion, communication conversion kit. So for example, if you want to con connect it to your control board, then you might need a PM bus to profinate or whatever you use as a protocol. Uh, if you want to connect it to the PC, then you need uh, UART to uh, USB or PM bus to USB, something like that. So the communication module. And next one, you need a graphical user interface. Of course, you can develop your own and then uh, you can connect the control board to the power supply and then do it. But from our side, to make life easy, we also uh, deliver uh, GUI. Um, so you can download this GUI from our website. Uh, we have um, uh, GUIs for both UART and PMOS. By using this GUI, uh, you can do many things so, so easily. So for example, you can monitor uh, voltage, current, temperature, and uh, several other parameters. And uh, at the same time, you can control the voltage or you can control the current easily by using uh, GUI. So these are the main evaluation tools you need. And next thing, connection method. So um, here in this picture, you can see the typical connection method. So for example, here you can see two digitally controlled power supplies connected to one master device. Um, so master device will be a PM bus hardware. And uh, you see three resistors here, R1, R2, and R3. So you can, I mean, the values uh, should be chosen accordingly. For example, the values of R1 is fixed, 10 kilo ohm, and R2 and R3 uh, should be chosen based on the parasitic capacitance you use. So you find all the details, required details in the manual. And next one, address setting. So um, for example, if you are using multiple power supplies, and if you want to uh, set an address to each power supply, you can do that in two ways, either analog connection method or digital connection method. Here in this picture, you can see the analog connection method. So there is a port uh, with uh, address setting pins. So you can simply short those pins um, and set the address. And, or you can use a, a digital method. So where there is a digital command and uh, you can set an address by using a digital command. So more details on uh, address setting is provided in the manuals. And next one, the main important thing, uh, what are the things you can realize with the digital commands? So here in this uh, table, you can see a snapshot, what you can do uh, uh, with the digital interface. So for example, uh, in your application, if you use a power supply with a digital control, you can monitor the power supply. You can monitor what is the input voltage, what is the frequency, what is the internal temperature, output voltage, output current, fan rotations. You can monitor multiple things. And also you can control the current. For example, for many of the applications, current control is required, like battery charging, for example. So you can set a constant current, or uh, for example, you can change the voltage all the way down to zero. Uh, for example, if you take any laser applications, for example, Pelchi element, where uh, a voltage control and current control is required, you can do that easily by using digital commands. And uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, you can set an address, or uh, you can sequence the outputs when you are using multiple uh, power supplies, uh, and also you can read a number of operational hours. And also one more important thing is whenever a power supply is failed, you can check what kind of error it is because there are some error codes and you can check, okay, why power supply is uh, switched off. Maybe due to over temperature protection or over current protection or something is wrong. You can monitor that, that aspect as well. So by using digital, com uh, digital commands, you can realize all these things. Um, 
So there is a manual you can find on our website. I think uh, if you use any other uh, manufacturer, I think everybody will offer you uh, our detailed manual where you can find all the commands and everything. So if you need such manuals, you can uh, uh, please browse our website to find all the details. Okay, so this is about the digitally controlled power supplies and uh, the main idea to introduce this part is uh, to tell you how uh, it will be useful uh, to your application uh, if you use a digitally controlled power supply. And uh, in next slide, I would like to show you some potential applications. Of course, they, um, I, uh, there are plenty of applications. And uh, here I would like to show you some examples. Semiconductor, wind turbines, oncology, medical oncology, battery chargers, laser, gas generators, for example, information displays, and radiotherapy, data centers, uh, smart power grids, and uh, industrial robots. So there are plenty of applications, of course, uh, but here just uh, some examples where we already had some success with, our, with some of our new models. So we would like to give you an idea uh, how digital communication will be useful. So um, we came to the last slide and uh, I would like to summarize what we have discussed today. Um, by using digital assist control, first of all, um, we can uh, meet a good balance. We can find a good balance between uh, both conventional analog and fully digital power supplies. So um, it, uh, it offers both worlds. Um, uh, so that is one of the main advantages. And second thing, efficiency will be improved and uh, internal losses will be, uh, will be reduced. So um, this is another advantage by using digital assist control. And uh, third thing, uh, it's a more fe features and functionalities. So for example, we have discussed uh, one of the main functionalities, digital control uh, feature. So um, uh, we, we offer more functionalities with uh, this technology. And next one, a number of components will be reduced. So you can see the size is already shrinked. So um, uh, that is another advantage. And next one, power densities uh, is reduced, uh, power density is increased by reducing the size. And also main point, we find a good balance between price and features. Um, and by using digital communication feature, what we offer on the power supply, you can monitor, control, and settings of the power supply. And uh, uh, you can find internal log files. For example, if there is any failure, it's easy to track what kind of failure it is. And uh, remote access of the power supply and uh, preventative maintenance by checking the number of operation hours. So these are the main points. Um, I know this is a, this is just a brief introduction and uh, you might have so many questions, but uh, yeah, we, uh, we have some time now and uh, we can assist if there are any questions. If not, you can contact us um, to our mail address. So um, if you have any technical queries, uh, please uh, write us an email to tech support at causaleurope.eu or you can um, uh, contact our partner Telex Europe, so which are based in Benelux. Um, so you can contact them as well. There is one question. Uh -huh. Is there any synchronization possible between the digital power supply frequency and the frequency setting of the EMI filters? Um, synchronization between uh, power supply frequency and frequency of the? Digital power supply frequency and the frequency setting of the EMI filters. Uh, that's a that's a tough question. I think um, it's not possible in general, but um, um, but we should check our, with our design engineers. I think in my point of view, it's difficult to realize that synchronize the uh, uh, filter frequency with the digital command frequency. But um, with the digital control, some of the things are possible. But uh, yeah, we can check with our engineers. Yeah. Any any other questions? That's it from the yeah. So, no questions further. Okay, yeah, we are we are on time. So um, uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and uh, thank you for your time. And uh, please stay safe. And uh, we are happy to answer any questions. Um, and uh, we hope to work with you in future. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity.